Hello everyone, this is Dan Robinson with StormHighway.com and IcyRoadSafety.com. I wanted to make this video presentation to announce a new project I've been working on for some time now. It's a new winter weather scale called the Vehicle Loss of Control Risk, or LCR for short. If you're a weather nerd like me, you know we have forecasting parameters for other types of weather hazards. For instance, for the Significant Tornado Parameter, or STP for tornadoes. LCR is a similar scale for showing the risk to a driver of losing control of a vehicle from icy roads. The higher the LCR value, the greater the risk is to someone operating a motor vehicle in that area. The main reason I started this project is because over the last 19 years I've been covering winter weather as a freelance cameraman. Over and over again I've seen the same conditions cause high impact events in terms of vehicle accidents. These conditions are very predictable. In fact, so predictable that I've been able to capture a large amount of partial or complete loss of control incidents on camera. Well over 200 at this point, as you can clearly see from the most popular videos on this channel. So the big problem is the main way people perceive winter weather hazards is by the precipitation amounts. For instance, how much snow is going to fall. But research is increasingly showing that most of the highest impact events in terms of accidents, deaths, and injuries happen with very very light amounts of winter precipitation. 70 to 75 percent of winter crashes happen with less than two inches of snow. And if you watch my videos, you can see that very clearly. Most people don't think of a light dusting of snow as a big deal, yet those types of events can be some of the worst for road impacts. So I wondered if it would be possible to put these conditions I'm seeing all the time down on paper, or in this case computer code, and then put it in the form of something that everyone can use. A script can be plugged into real-time weather data or numerical model data to generate maps that show where these conditions were happening or were likely to happen. So the idea here is to rank the risk to a driver out on the road of losing control of their vehicle and getting into an accident. So I've assigned some impact descriptions to the LCR levels. And again, these are based on what I've seen happen in the field time and time again. The scale names and colors here are mimicking what the SPC does for severe weather, and these will likely be adjusted as time goes on. So I'm pretty happy to report this script is now functioning with model data and I've started generating LCR forecast maps from various models posting them on the icyroadsafety.com website and I started a new Twitter account called LCR underscore forecast. I'm also making this script freely available under a GNU open source license so if you run any type of weather information outlet I'm inviting and encouraging you to add LCR to your data displays. Right now the LCR script is in kind of an experimental beta stage at this time so at the time of this video is posting so there'll be plenty of ongoing work to refine and update it moving forward the the real-time analysis application of LCR is the next big item on my list of goals so if you're in the weather enterprise and have some experience with this type of scripting and development I of course welcome and appreciate any assistance you can give so now that we're done with the introduction I wanted to go through how LCR is calculated keep in mind here that some of these weather conditions factors I'm going to talk about will probably be changed in future versions of the script and we just need to get more experience of how they're performing in the real world. So the basic condition that creates icy roads is precipitation of any type that's rain, snow, sleet, grapple, that falls into below freezing air at the surface. So precipitation and surface temperature are, are at the heart of LCR calculation. So LCR activates at a location where precipitation is falling and the surface temperature is approaching the freezing point. So on a weather chart, LCR is going to start at zero everywhere except for where those conditions are present. The threshold right now for the lowest LCR value of one is precipitation falling when the surface temperature is at or below 38 degrees Fahrenheit and the surface wet bulb temperature is at 33 or below. Now, if you don't know what wet bulbing is, you can Google it. But briefly speaking, it's a phenomenon that causes temperatures to drop when water evaporates into dry air. It's why swamp coolers work in really dry places like Arizona in the summer. Basically, when the wet bulb temperature is at or below freezing, falling precipitation can quickly cause the air temperature to drop below freezing, even if it starts out well above freezing. So this baseline LCR starts at 1 where the air temperature is 38, wet bulb temp is 33, and light precipitation is falling under one tenth of an inch liquid equivalent in a one hour period. LCR goes to 2 when the surface temperature is at 36 or below 
and wet bulb temp is 32 or below. And the precipitation rates are a little higher, but between a tenth and a quarter of an inch in one hour. Finally, LCR is set to three if you have heavier precipitation, quarter of an inch or more when surface temperatures are at or below 36 and a wet bulb temp of 32 or below. So that's what we'll call baseline LCR. So after the baseline LCR value is assigned, we start adding to that number depending on certain conditions being true. So roads can start to get hazardous even when the temperatures are slightly above freezing. Now that's what the baseline LCR function is meant to cover. It's when the temperature drops below freezing when most problems start happening. So the script adds one point to the baseline LCR value if the temperature is at or below freezing. If the temperatures have been below freezing for some time before the precipitation starts, road surfaces will have had time to cool down, and that's even following warm weather. For this reason, if the average temperature in the previous six hours is below freezing, the script adds another one point to the LCR value. Now this is a big one. When the surface temperature falls to 29 or below, you really start to see a significant worsening of road conditions, and that's during any precipitation type. Not only does a more solid bonding or adhesion of ice to the road surface develop at those temperatures, but you see the heat from vehicle traffic introducing a melting and refreezing cycle of the frozen material that's already on the ground. This creates a uniform, well-bonded layer of ice that's nearly as bad as what we see with pure freezing rain. Once temperatures drop below 24 degrees, the heat from vehicles is less able to produce the melting that's required for this refreezing cycle to keep going. Again, precipitation falling in this temperature range really creates a jump in the overall severity of the conditions, and that's something I see in the field all the time. Once you get to 29, it starts getting really bad. So, the LCR script adds another two points to the LCR value when the temperatures are between 24 and 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this isn't to say that roads aren't slippery below 24 degrees. They are, but the effect that this temperature range has on the conditions is really, really prominent. I see it all the time in the field. In fact, the vast majority of the incidents that I've captured on camera happen within this temperature range. Now, I don't really need to explain this one too much, especially if you have any experience driving in freezing rain or freezing drizzle. And if you don't, I've got a video on my channel about freezing rain and plenty of videos of incidents happening in freezing rain. These precipitation types create the most uniform and the most slick types of road icing. And to make matters worse, this type of icing is very hard for drivers to see. So, if the precipitation type is freezing rain or freezing drizzle, the script adds another two points to the LCR value. Those are the weather parameters that influence LCR. So now we're going to get into some non-weather factors that increase the risk to a driver. Road treatment plays a major role on how bad any given icy road event is going to be. The southern United States sees far fewer winter weather events than areas farther north, and for that reason, they don't have the de-icing capacity that northern or even middle latitudes of the country have. And by de-icing capacity, I mean salt trucks, snow plows, supplies of salt, that kind of thing. Now that means that any given winter precipitation event in these regions will tend to be much worse in terms of accident rates than the same type of storm happening in the central and northern regions of the country. And if you're familiar with my videos, you know I spend a lot of time covering southern United States winter storms, and you've seen how bad those can be. Now the LCR script handles this factor by the latitude part of the location's coordinates. At locations at or south of the 35 degree latitude, LCR is increased by 1. If at or south of 34 degrees latitude, LCR is increased by 2. And if at or south of 33 degrees latitude, LCR is increased by 3. Again, that's gonna, the 3 is going to cover mainly the southern two-thirds of the Gulf Coast states, for example. Again, there are refinements to this that I'm working on. For example, in the mountainous regions, even in, even in southern latitudes like northern Georgia and some of, the, some of the mountains in Arizona and New Mexico. Those places have slightly better de-icing capacity than the lower elevations do, but that's something that's going to take some granular geofencing of those areas. And again, something's coming soon, but at this point right now, the time of the video is posting, those are not 
yet active. So the reduced de-icing capacity is right now just the 35, 34, and 33 degree latitude. The second non-weather factor that affects the icy road risk is whether the event was forecasted in advance. When you have a forecasted winter weather event, there are two things that happen. So number one, the DOT crews are ready. The authorities are ready. They have all hands on deck. They've got everybody ready to go. They have the salt stockpiles ready to go. The trucks are loaded with salt. Everybody has been called in to work. They're just ready to go. And the second thing you see is the general public is also prepared. You know, a lot of people decide not to go to work. Some people postpone their travel. They, they go to the store and get their bread and milk beforehand, you know, that kind of thing. So most winter precipitation events are well forecasted, thankfully. The National Weather Service does a great job, but the weather being the weather, it's inevitable that sneaky events are gonna slip by and catch everyone by surprise. It just happens. It's it's just a fact of life. And that can be events like a freak dusting of snow at rush hour or freezing drizzles that no model or any other weather data showed happening. Now, the impact that a surprise winter precipitation event has is massive. The salting and plowing personnel can take hours to mobilize. And that's because those workers have to be called in from home, a lot of them do. And if the roads are already snarled with ice and accidents, it's hard for them to even get to the DOT facility in the first place. Once they get to the DOT facility, they've got to get the trucks ready, get them started up and ready to go. And then once the trucks are on the road, you've, again, you've got the roads are already treacherous. You have traffic backups. It's just really hard for them to get out and get things treated. So, and again, you have the, the general public's not prepared. They're driving faster. They haven't postponed their trips or their events. They haven't stayed home from work like they would with something that's forecasted. And so these events are really bad. The surprise events I've documented have been some of the worst I've seen in my career. And I've seen a few of them. Because this factor is so huge, a surprise event adds three points to any given LCR calculation or, or LCR value. So the main issue with incorporating the surprise event factor into LCR is that there's really nothing in a numerical model that you can use to trigger it. I mean, if you could see a surprise event on a model, then it wouldn't be a surprise event. <laughs> it's by definition, it's a surprise event. Nothing shows it. So for that reason, the script that uses model data doesn't include this factor. I mean, even though it's an important factor, there's just no way to reliably put it into a script or to use a model to trigger it. What that means is the maximum LCR value that a model chart can show is going to be 12. So it's 1 to 12 on a model. If you, if you want to add the surprise event factor, let's say you see a potential event on a model, but it's below the threshold of what you know, maybe forecasters don't think it's going to happen. If it does happen and there's no forecast, then you can add three onto that value. The real time side is different. That will be able to incorporate the surprise event factor because you can look at a location and see, is there a winter storm watch, warning, or advisory in effect for that location? That's a good indicator whether or not the event is has been forecast. It might be possible to do it with zone forecasts based on precipitation amounts, but I think the watch warning and advisory, it's going to be a binary value. Is, is a warning watch or advisory in effect? Yes or no? That's going to be pretty reliable for that factor for real-time analysis. The freezing fog factor is going to need some work going forward, so expect to see some changes with this one. The LCR script only assigns freezing fog values when there is no precipitation. That means if LCR is still zero after it goes through the first part of the script. So if you have precipitation, the freezing fog part of the script is just not going to be used at all. So freezing fog is going to use, it looks for near saturated relative humidity, and then it assigns values of one, two, or three based on temperatures thresholds, 31, 29, and 27, respectively. Now, like I said, that's a huge oversimplification of freezing fog. So this part of the script is definitely going to be seeing some changes moving forward. The other thing I'm seeing after running the script for about a week now is that the models are producing precipitation, very light precipitation, in areas that are forecasted to see freezing fog or where freezing fog is actually happening. And what that means is that the main part of the script is catching that. So we might not even need 
need freezing fog factor in the in the uh, script. We might be able to just take it out altogether because if the models produce precipitation, then that's going to trigger the main part of the script. And so you won't need to worry about a separate freezing fog calculation. I talked before about how temperature and precipitation are the core conditions that influence icy road events. Uh, most of the worst events happen where you have any type of precip falling where the temperatures are below freezing. So I thought it would be a good idea to make the LCR script also generate this value called BFP using those two factors. Now this is something like when I'm forecasting winter weather, it's kind of a, a pain because I always have to switch between QPF and temperature charts back and forth to try to you know, get a visual between where those two things overlap. And right now there's just nothing that you can use for that. So. I'm, this thing is I, I created a lot for my own use. This calculation, what it does, it just says uh, any precipitation, doesn't matter the type, snow, rain, drizzle, sleet, grapple, they all are going to create icy roads if the temperatures are below freezing. So that's what this BFP does, below freezing precipitation. And here's a chart of what BFP looks like from model data. So that's it for now. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about the LCR scale the LCR webpage has a section that shows how to download model data and run the script and then generate the charts using a data viewer. And I'll be updating that section as improvements to the workflow get finished and I figure out any tips and tricks to make the process easier. If you decide to run the script and find any bugs, uh, please let me know. If you're in the weather community and you have any questions about the methodology or any suggestions on how we can improve this thing to make it more useful and accurate, I'd be glad to hear it. Thanks for watching.